The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Over the next two episodes, we're going to build a miniature tabletop coin-op arcade game system using an old school CRT screen and a Neo Geo motherboard. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I'd like to show you some of the things I brought back from Maker Fair. I got a SD card shield for Arduino. It's always useful for working up an SD card. Don't have to worry about the level conversion. A uh, dynamic motor driver shield. You can drive steppers or DC motors with this. Pretty cool device. This is kind of neat. It's the new uh, PIC32 development board from uh, Chipkit. It's an SD card built in and doesn't have the FTDI chip. You actually use a bootloader. Pretty neat stuff. Microchip also has a new uh, DIP28 package for their PIC32 chip. See that right there? So I'm already going to use this in a project. And then Seed Studio had kind of an Arduino clone you can get for 20 bucks. I bought one of those. Here is an ARM-based development board that was a Kickstarter. The uh, founder of this uh, gave me one of these for free. Thank you. And then I got this RGB matrix with I squared C addressing, although its bit depth is kind of weak. So yeah, it was a pretty good haul. The idea here is to make a tabletop arcade style machine. I'm going to use a lot of old school components to do it. This represents the Neo Geo single slot uh, JAMA arcade board that we bought. It's going to sit here down at the bottom. We're going to use an actual CRT from the era, an old Commodore Amiga monitor. The reason we're using that is because it has a 15 kilohertz RGB composite sync input, which is the same thing as uh, most arcade games before you know the year 2000. Uh, top view, we see where the monitor is, and we'll have the power supply down here on the edge. Again, we're going to use an existing one that we have laying around. Above the power supply will be the coin slot, which you can kind of see in this view. So there should be room to collect the coins here above the power supply. And this is kind of an isometric view of what it'll look like when done. Here are the main parts of this arcade machine laid out kind of like a skeleton on a crime scene, like on all those TV shows. Here's the big part, the uh, CRT monitor. This is kind of going to direct everything else. Here we have the one slot Neo Geo, the cartridge goes in here. And I'm kind of thinking the monitor can be like this, just above it. I have a uh, rack mount power supply here. Just trying to use up all my power supplies. This one's kind of loud. I can probably remove the fans without affecting, the, affecting it too much. Neo Geo doesn't take that much power. So this will probably be mounted right here. Then we'll have the coin door above it, like that. Coins go in and they can be collected right here, we'll have a little box. And then in the front, we'll have a single joystick, start button, and then the four Neo Geo game buttons. This is a JAMA cable. JAMA stands for Japanese Amusement Machinery Manufacturers Association. Phew! What happened in the 80s is there are so many different types of arcade machines. It was hard for operators to, you know, service them all. So they came up with a JAMA connector, which means every game had the same connector. As long as you had standardized stuff like joysticks, the same kind of display, you could take a board out of one cabinet, put in a newer game, put new decals on the cabinet, and you had a new game because it was standardized. So Neo Geo uses it as well. We bought this JAMA connector off HAP Controls. It's a really nice one. It has all the power, speakers, uh, coin door, player one and two, and video all in their own little bundles and color-coded. So that's pretty handy. So basically, the JAMA connector can hook directly into this monitor and it will just work because this monitor is very similar to arcade monitors from the 80s. It's not like your TV, it's RGB plus sync, which is different than VGA. Well, it's actually closer to VGA than it is to like component because you might see RGB in the back of your DVD player. Well, that's not RGB, it's actually component or YUV. Whereas this monitor will work with this just right off the bat. There's even speakers from here we can take. I've had this monitor a long time, but I've never really used it for anything, so it's time for it to do something better than take up space. This power supply came from a rack mount server, which means it has a lot of cooling, which means it's loud. Let's just fire it up here. PC power supply will easily you know, power an arcade board. It has way more current than this needs. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove these fans. 
Again, it's not going to work nearly as hard as it would on the PC, so we don't need to cool it as much. Without the fans, it won't make much noise at all. I'm gonna unplug it first. What I think I'll do is either go with no fan or try to find a quieter fan I can put next to it. Although I think I could get away with no fan. I know it sounds awful, but I'm pretty sure I could. The electronics industry is evolving at a rapid pace. Professionals and hobbyists from all corners of the electronics world are coming to a significant realization. We could all use some assistance. Wouldn't it be nice if we could reach out and ask for expert advice when we need it? Our questions drive innovation, and thankfully, Element 14 provides us with a way to get the answers we need. With a community of over 100,000 engineers, Element 14 offers the fastest project solutions. Members can engage with more than 50 industry-leading experts. We have dedicated technology and application groups, free technical documents and technology webinars, 24-5 technical support, and legislation advice. Element14.com is the place to find experts with answers. Free expert support is just one more way that Element 14 makes it easy for engineers to be inspired and find the solutions they need to get the job done. And now, back to the show. Here is the JAMA pinout. Now this one's specific to the Neo Geo. There's four grounds and four positive five volt pins up here. There's a negative five volt pair of pins, but we don't actually need that. Neo Geo has no traces for that, so we don't need to hook it up. PC Power Supply does have negative five and negative 12. Although a lot of modern ones don't have negative five, but we don't need it. Everything else is pretty straightforward. All the player one controls are right here on the top half of it, as well as the coin door switch and the RGB video stuff. So what we'll do is we'll cut off what we don't need and then loop the rest of the cables around to the front of the unit. So I'm gonna wire this directly to the power supply. No need to add more interconnects than we need. This JAMA cable is using blue instead of yellow for 12 volts, but that's fine. So I'm just going to hook these up directly to where they were on the original PC cable. Time to take apart this monitor and see what's inside. Also probably connect its AC input to the switch on the power supply so you can turn on everything in one go. This monitor is not actually as old as I thought it was. So this was manufactured April 1992, uh, probably for the video toaster, which was a uh, video effects system that ran on the Amiga. It was used well into the 90s. I have most of the chassis off from the monitor. Before I continue, I'm going to have to remove this and get a bolt pattern so I know exactly how to mount this to a new case. So that's the next step. Remove the tube, get the bolt pattern. To test the next part, I'm going to need the screen. However, it's not safe to run it all apart like this. So I started making what I could of the case. I don't have it fully designed yet, but I built enough of it to have a frame so we can mount a monitor into it to continue. With the tube mounted to its frame, I now have to mount the circuit board to this um, white base plate. That way it won't hit the tube and cause a short circuit or something. But then we'll be ready to test it. What I need to do now is mount this motherboard to the horizontal support piece. So yes, there's really no holes in it, so I'm just gonna have to tap screws around it to hold it in place. All right, so I'm wiring the RGB from the JAMA connector to this DB9 jack, and that we plugged into the back of the monitor. Here are all of the electronic components hooked together and working. We have our PC power supply, providing five volts and 12 volts to our Neo Geo. The Neo Geo Arcade has a cartridge in it. Then we have our RGB plus sync going into the old school monitor, which is displaying our game. 
So that's pretty much what we're going to do for now. In the next episode, we're going to hook up a joystick to the connectors here and a coin slot and some speakers and finish this off with some graphics to make it look like a cool little arcade machine. We get a lot of questions about working with Arduino. Most of the questions are pretty specific and would require a lengthy explanation, which is why for this viewer question segment, I'm going to share my top Arduino resources that I use when I'm stumped. First off is www.arduino.cc, the official Arduino site. Click on the reference tab there to learn about all the functions and library usage for the Arduino. Secondly, www.adafruit.com has a lot of information if you click on the Tutorials tab. The Adafruit site tends to deal more with how to connect Arduinos to common devices like connect my Arduino to a display or how do I connect to an SD card. Finally, you can always Google it with a short, concise search like Arduino RTC Connect if, for instance, you're wondering how to connect a real-time clock to your Arduino. And of course, you can always go to the Element 14 community and ask questions there. There's a lot of information on the internet about Arduino because it's a popular microcontroller. It's pretty easy to find. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll finish up our mini arcade by attaching controls, adding speakers, and routing the rest of the enclosure. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.